Okay then, hello everybody and welcome back to Team Prom Racing. So, last week I went on a little bit of a road trip and I chatted so much that we got up to nearly 20 minutes of video before I even arrived at the first stop. Oddly, a lot of people quite like that. I got quite a few messages saying they like that sort of video, they like that sort of technical chat and stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to get back to the road trip. We are just about to arrive at Badger 5, so I'll see you there. I'm sure this is a view plenty of you recognise. Right, so here we are at Badger 5. Now lots of you have requested a bit of a teardown video. There's probably not enough content to make a whole video, but this is essentially the bench of prawn stuff. So I'm going to spin the camera around and show you what we're up against. Prawn's bench of stuff. Old head, old pistons. That's our crank, which is still good. New head, new block. Bunch of shiny, cool new stuff. So, what should we start with? So here we've got the original mains that came out. And they look, they look absolutely mint, to be honest. No... No real, well you can see them there, they all look really good. That was one happy engine before I cocked it up. Pistons, these all look really good around the skirts and everything. This is the one that has really, really taken the brunt of it. This piston, ta-da. So yeah, that was cylinder two. This exhaust valve has dropped just through to age and death. You see this hole here? So this exhaust valve has dropped. It's mashed this back in and the bit of this seat has come out. This valve seat has come out. It's gone into the inlet and it's peppered. It's spread. Bits of this, bits of valve, bits of spark plug have gone everywhere. It's damage number one. It's damage number three. Quite a lot got into number four and it's made an almighty mess of that. So yeah. There's a piston from two. Mullard, there's a piston from four, I think it was. I forget the order now exactly, but they've all, they've all seen impact damage. They are all absolutely knackered. So, dead stuff, not cool. However, stuff is already well underway. So here's a block we picked up. I think the block is one that we got from Andrew Melvin on Facebook. We've got a head. This head has come from Mike Pullen, one of our subscribers. Thank you very much, Mike. That's a nice AGU head, done around 120k. Been through the parts washer and all actually looking really good. That's going to get cleaned up fully, new guides. And once that is done, we'll be getting this lot in. So here we've got full SuperTech single groove. New block is off to get bored, decked. We're going to have some billet mains down here and then it all gets line board to make sure that works. And that will be getting a set of integrated engineering JE 83mm pistons, 9.25 to 1. I'm not going to open these up because they're all very nicely wrapped in there, keeping clean. That's our crank all wrapped up. That's going to be x-rayed before it goes back in, but we are absolutely confident that is all good to go. Right, so that's all my bits up at Badger 5. That's a little mini teardown for you guys of what exactly failed and what we're doing. All our new stuff is now planned. I'm going to hit the road. I've got about an hour's trip to Leamington Spa where I'm going to DTA fast to pick up some tubular wishbones. See you there. Right, so that's Badger 5 done. Next up, we're back on the road. We are off to Leamington Spa to see Alex at DTA to pick up some IDF tubular wishbones. So a lot of you guys know we actually tried some wishbones from Alan at Parts Garage earlier in the year. They unfortunately failed during testing. We discussed revising the design and having another go at them, but we decided that Alan and his skills are better put to use elsewhere. So for now, I'm going to be running these IDF tubular wishbones that popped up for sale from Alex at DTA, and Alan is focusing his efforts elsewhere, but you're going to have to tune in another time to find out what that's all about. There we go, folks. DTA.
Right, so hour up the road and we have come from Badger 5, we have arrived at DTA. So a lot of you guys might recommend and rear. Start again. So, <laughs> so a lot of you guys might recognize Alex's awesome Mark II. It used to be blue, went yellow a number of years ago. Absolutely legendary car, been all over the place, been at the ring, awesome stuff. What are we here for? Blue A3, also been around for a very long time, owned by Alex, unfortunately being broken for parts. I'm gonna spin the camera around, show you a few things around the car, and then show you what we are going home with. So this is another well-known car from the Club GTI era. And it's up for sale. So if anyone is after a four-wheel drive A3 shell with an extremely nice weld-in cage and a bunch of other bits, you want to give Alex at DTA a shout. Plastic windows all round, monster welding cage. Brakes, anyone recognize them? They are my old AP4 pots. We've got a really nice comp brake bias bar system in there, brand new. And the creme de la creme, one Badger 5 built two litre stroker with what I think is a 3076 on a ceramic Nortec manifold. So if any of that stuff is of any interest to any of you guys, give Alex a shout. You find him very easily. He's the main man behind DTA Fast, which is where I am now. Makers of things like the S80, the new T-Series ECU, all that sort of kit. But none of that is what we're here for today. We are gonna be going home with this lovely set of infab tubular wishbones. So as you know, we had the wishbones from Parts Garage earlier in the year. First iteration didn't work out fully. So we did look at redesigning them, but these popped up for sale from Alex. They're tried and tested. They're a decent design, not on car caster adjustable, but you can still adjust it by doing the two rows joints together. So we're gonna get these cleaned up. We might powder coat them orange because we do that for everything and we'll get these on the car. Right, so that's me done here at DTA. Next stop is a Renault Colville to see Rog for a few more bits. Right, so that's DTA done. Got a really nice set of wishbones. Um, it's given me a few things to think about though. So a couple of years ago, I really wanted to fit a comp brake. Comp brake OBP, they're very, very similar things. Uh, a servo replacement pedal box that puts dual master cylinders in the engine bay and gives you dual master cylinders with adjustable bias. I found one guy, Dan Roberts Jefferson, who had one, didn't really fit. I spoke to Comp Brake and they went, yeah, it fits fine. I went, okay, cool, can you show me a picture of it with a 1.8T? No. Couldn't find any genuine evidence that it fitted properly. Dan's in his red golf is a really shifty fit. It's properly like in the cam belt cover, wasn't happy with that parked it, bought an OBP V2 cockpit floor mounted pedal box. Now I've been planning to fit that this winter and it's a hell of a job changing all the ergonomics of the whole car. It's a major, major thing. I didn't, didn't really want to get into it but I want the bias control so I was going to do it. Just been to DTA and seen Alex's car and he's got the, the bulkhead mounted servo replacement box with compact master cylinders quite a lot shorter. I said if it's fine, and it's for sale. I can see another plan coming on here. I did not expect to be going for that, but if I've got two or three days worth of work, which I think I do, putting the uh, the OBP V2 in, it's irreversible cutting holes in the floor, it's changing all the ergonomics, bringing the feet up, driving position change. I really like how it feels at the moment. I really like the position. If I could just get the brake feel where I want it and do away with the vac pump, food for thought. Anyway, we've left ETA, we've got another hour up the road and we are about to arrive at Renault Colville, which is not Renault Colville at all, it's Roger's house, where we are picking up a special delivery from Parts Garage. A little longer than a few minutes later. Right, so that's Roger's dump. I didn't film anything because we were just at Roger's house, so I'm not going to show you all around his house and he wasn't feeling too good. But we're back in the car, I've got a box in the back, which has got an SQS six-speed dog gear set in it. Very excited about that. 
and I've got um, I've got some cardboard boxes behind me. Very light cardboard boxes. No idea what they are. Hmm. I'll show you them when I get home. Later that same evening. Right. So we are back from Renault Colville, as I call it, Roger's place. And the first thing we've picked up from Parts Garage is an extremely nice set of carbon wings. So yeah, these are, um, oh look at them. It's cold in here, this isn't dust, it's actually that cold in here now. These weigh absolutely nothing. So these are just under 1.4 kilos each. Really, really, let me try and, no, I don't have enough light in here. You can't see it. Let me come over here where there's light, look at that. Really, really nice carbon finish. Uh, I don't know, is that a combo of dust and uh, condensation? It's pretty grim in here. I won't lie. Camera, stay. So, set of carbon wings. Alan actually bought these for his road car, but he wasn't happy with the fit. There are no holes drilled anywhere. Just a mounting tab at the bottom, like an S3 wing that will be changing about a bit. I think Alan said the door gap wasn't great, but, well... But as we don't really have a door gap, doesn't make any odds to me. So, carbon wings, first part of the uh, winter weight loss program for the car. Awesome. Thank you very much, Alan. However, these are definitely not the coolest thing he sent over. And I'm going to show you. Right, so this next bit is something I've undenied about in the past, something I've always really wanted and never had. And you know what? Somehow, Alan had a spare set set on the shelf. He's already got one for his car. He had a spare. Nobody has this stuff spare. Anyway, spin the camera around. Check this out. Oh yes, that's right. So we have here a full six-speed SQS dog gear set. So being a six speed, you get a full input shaft there with all the gears. You get different shift forks for the, uh, for the box and for the engagement. We have a billet fork in there and look at these. So gear wise, very similar to our Monster, except the Monster is only three to six, but when you flip it over, no synchro, just dog engagement. So that is gonna be a massive upgrade. We also have here a brand spanking new Quaif ATB for an O2M, and that comes complete with ARP ground wheel and pinion bolts. Now, now as you know, I am not about to run a four wheel drive diff because I've got a front wheel drive box, and I'm not about to run a Quaif ATB, having gone over to a plate diff several years ago and loved it. We now run a gripper. However, I think Alan was going to build this up as a complete spare box. The box is still his. Don't get me wrong, guys. He's not giving me this stuff. The man is an absolute legend. He sent it over. He said, use it as long as you like. If he ever needs it, we'll talk. Cannot tell you how great parts garage are. Seriously. Check them out. But yeah, I want to use a plate diff. Alan has that brand new Quaife. So that is for sale. If anyone wants a brand spanking new Quaife ATB for an O2M four-wheel drive, then give me a shout. I'm sure we can... Uh, come some arrangement. It's here, it's in the UK, I can ship it out anytime. So yeah, pretty awesome little trip if I'm honest. We've been to Badger 5, we've got a bit of an update on engine progress, that's all coming along very nicely. We've been to DTA, we've got ourselves a lovely set of wishbones. I've actually thought about it since, I've actually bought a couple more bits from Alex, but I won't tell you about them now. If there's anything you saw on Alex's A3 braking, do give him a shout. It's Alex DTA Fast. We've been to Renault Colville, we've seen Rog and had a nice cup of tea. We've come back with some very, very light carbon wings and my dream SQS dog box gear set. So overall, a pretty cool Sunday as far as they go. We've got a ton of new bits for the car, we've seen a bunch of people, had a lot of fun. If you guys like this style of video, vlogs, kind of travelling around, seeing what I'm up to, let me know, I can do more of it. I know a couple of people want more of the garage techie videos, don't worry, plenty of them coming up this winter. Have some dinner, I think. Thanks for coming with me today. Have fun. Like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.